in terms of Breaking Dawn, I wanted to ask you, there are some really sort of big key scenes in the movie. And I know everyone's been making real fuss about kind of the honeymoon scene and the wedding, mm. but the one that really caught my eye watching it was the actual, the delivery scene, mm. the, the, the birth of Renesme. Um, because I'm guessing it's not every day you get to deliver a vampire baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wanted to ask you, what are the, you know, what were the challenges in filming that scene? What was it like? Um, I mean, multiple <laughs> challenges. I mean, they're kind of... For one thing, it was kind of there weren't there wasn't really any dialogue, and it was, um, I mean, quite sort of frantic, and you, we couldn't really film it exactly what was happening, and no one really knew what the shots were because we didn't know how it was going to be censored afterwards and stuff. I mean, and uh, so it was kind of complicated, and it was also a long sequence, a long continuous sequence. I mean, it was like six minutes long from going into labour to, I guess, pretty much the end of the movie. Um, so that was kind of nerve-wracking. And also, filming, we were working with babies that were like three weeks old. Um, and we were in the middle of a warehouse, so you kind of... I just felt really bad having the baby because it was so cold in there. And like, I mean, we had to put kind of cream cheese and strawberry jam on these babies to look like they were just like... Oh my yeah, and I was just like, I felt so awful the entire time. Um, and, uh, but it was kind of fun though. It makes it much easier when, as soon as you're working with a real baby. So we had a doll and then a robot thing. It was robots. Yeah, which really didn't work at all. <laughs> um, I think the robot may still be featured in the second movie. I hope it is because it's absolutely hilarious. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess just always working with babies is always a little bit of a challenge because you, you know, you want to kind of get into the character, but at the same time you're holding this, you're holding this little thing. Do you sort of, after four years, ever get used to the fans because the Twilight fans are such an you know, a massive part of, of everything. Mm. And still just, you know, our website has nearly crashed this week on our Twitter due to people, you know, <laughs> the fans sort of coming on and, and asking about things. I mean, yeah, no, not really. And it's totally crazy as well, but it's just still just as intense. I mean, the last, the premiere last night was bigger than all the others. And uh, it's crazy. It's also, there's such an interaction between, I mean, uh, the movie and the movie makers. I mean, not so much... I haven't really had that much interaction other than at premieres and stuff, but I mean, real executive decisions are made because of what is said on message boards and stuff. Like whenever there's a kind of, whenever paparazzi photos come out and something was wrong, like things would literally change on set. We'd be like, "What?" Like it's like, it's crazy. I mean, but um, but kind of, I mean, it kind of makes sense. I mean, they kind of, it was really a grassroots thing. I mean. Even though everyone says there was a massive fan base for the book before we made the movie, it was nothing like, I mean, no one had heard of Twilight apart from a real core group of people. And they really pushed and pushed and pushed and spread it around, spread it around by word of mouth. Um, and that's what really made the movie successful.